Neil Barnard, MD, is President of the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, founder of the Barnard Medical Center, and adjunct professor of medicine at the George Washington University School of Medicine. Dr. Barnard has led numerous research studies investigating the effects of diet on diabetes, body weight, and chronic pain. He has authored more than 100 scientific publications and 20 books. In his most recent book, Your Body in Balance, Dr. Barnard describes how food and hormones play a powerful role in many aspects of our health. Uh, Dr. Barnard, welcome to Modern Health Span, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. It's great to be with you today. So, Dr. Barnard, your most recent book, uh, you've written a number of books, but your most recent book was uh, The Body in Balance, uh, The New Science of food, hormone, and health, uh, really talking about hormone health and how food affects it. So could you just provide some background on what hormones are and particularly how food affects them and, and, and why that, you know, and how that then goes on to affect our health? Sure. Hormones are chemicals that are made in one part of your body and they go through the bloodstream to another part of your body where they exert various effects. For example, your thyroid gland is this sort of unassuming organ at the base of your neck, but it makes thyroid hormone, which goes to all the cells of your body and it provides energy. And if you don't have enough thyroid hormone, you don't have much energy, you're gaining weight. Uh, if you have too much, you can feel revved up and on edge and have all kinds of problems. Um, but the key is this, that I, up until now, we've tended to think of health issues uh, sort of in isolation. I've got a high cholesterol level and I need a medication to undo it, or I've got a, um, maybe my diet is, is leading my cholesterol level to be high, let's fix that. But we can be much more sophisticated about it. And if we understand that hormones affect virtually every physiologic function mm -hmm. and that you can tune up or tune down your hormones with really simple changes um, in eating habits, then you've got control over an enormous number of things that can affect our health for good or ill. And so that's the whole idea. Uh, hormones are chemical messengers. We can control them based on what you had for breakfast. Cool, yes. So famously, uh, you know, estrogen and testosterone, kind of um, change as you age. And I'd like to dive into those in kind of more detail. But as we get older, are there other hormonal changes that happen in a predictable way that affect our bodies? And, and you know, how big are those effects? Yes, uh, one of the ones that's of tremendous concern to doctors, um, as well as to the public, is uh, the changes in the effect of insulin. Mm. Um, insulin is made in your pancreas and it will go through the bloodstream and it arrives at the surface of your muscle cells and the surface of your liver cells. And its job is to take sugar that's building up in your blood and to take that sugar and put it into the muscle cells where it can give the muscle cell energy. Mm. And as we get older, for many people, their cells don't respond very well to insulin. Um, and the key though, is that it has nothing to do with how many times you've gone around the sun. <laughs> it's not related to your age. Um, it's related to what you have been eating. And so what we have been doing is to be able to reverse that process and to be able to get insulin working again. Um, but most people have no idea about that. They just thought, well, all right, so I'm 45, I got diabetes. My parents had diabetes, it must be genetic. And, and there are genetic um, components to this, but mostly, the issue is that your parents, in addition to giving you DNA, also gave you some recipes and, and some tastes for foods. And those foods have been kind of um, making your insulin not work, but it's a pretty easy matter to get it working again. In this case, it's getting things out of your diet that allow you to get those things out of your cells and get out of insulin's way. Right. Um, so very, so very briefly, what would those things be to kind of increase insulin resistance? Um, the answer came from really um, some very expensive and high-tech scans called magnetic resonance spectroscopy. It's related to if you went to the doctor and had an MRI to look at a twisted ankle or, or something like that. Um, but magnetic resonance spectroscopy looks inside your muscle cells. And what we discover is this shocking thing that you've been feeling fine 
but your muscle cells have been accumulating little bits of microscopic fat particles from the, from the mayo on your sandwich, from the cheese on your pizza, from the grease in your French fries. And that fat has been building up in the muscle cells. And as it builds up, it interferes with insulin's ability to signal. So the insulin comes from the pancreas, it's going through the bloodstream, it arrives at the top of the muscle cell and it physically attaches. Mm. And what it discovers is that the cell is filled with glop, fat, that's been building up for years and it can't work its way through the cell and it can't signal the cell to open up to let the glucose in. So what do you do? Um, in our research studies, we take the fat out. So I'm gonna, first of all, I'm gonna make you a vegan. So there's, because I don't want a drop of animal fat in your diet. And, and frankly, it's good for mm. other reasons too. You're gonna have no cholesterol either, for example. But I'm gonna go further. I'm gonna take all that fryer grease and salad oil and, and, and grease from any form and really minimize it in your diet. And then if I stick you back into my big data resonance spectroscopy machine, 12 weeks later, 16 weeks later, what you discover is you're not the same person anymore. Hmm. That fat has come out of your cells to a great degree. And then the insulin, your insulin arrives and suddenly it can work again. And it's working like it did when you were 16. This has a variety of effects. Uh, among the effects are diabetes improves. You, you people need less medication, sometimes none, sometimes their diabetes goes away. Mm -hmm. Secondly, for people who have had weight problems, um, they discover that their weight loss speeds up a great deal because now the sugar can go into the muscle cell and get burnt. And we measure it, that you're, you're, you're actually liberating calories as body heat rather than storing them as fat. And third, people feel much more energy than they did before. So if, let's say a person's 50, 60, 70 years old, mm. sluggish, a little overweight, on medications, thinking uh, this is just what happens. Well, this is what happens, but what we can do is we could change our diet and make it unhappen to a very substantial degree in age is not a barrier to the ability to reclaim your health in, in these domains. Right, so uh, that's good. Um, so one thing, if, the hormone, if, if our hormones get out of balance, is that too wide a question? I mean, what kind of effects does that have and and to some extent what do we what would we mean by our hormones being out of balance um, out, by, by out of balance it means that they're either there's either not enough of them or there's too much yeah um i'll give you an example I, I was sitting here at my desk and the phone rang and a young woman called me up and said she couldn't get out of bed because she had menstrual cramps hmm. and you think of that doctors will describe that as just a sign of womanhood. And you just have to put up with the fact you're going to be miserable for one day every month. Um, and maybe 10% of women have such bad cramps during their reproductive years that they don't go to work that day. Um, and that was her problem. And most every doctor would prescribe either hormonal treatments or drugs for that, but that's not what I did. Um, and I have to confess at the beginning, before we had done clinical trials on this, I, I started with an educated guess, and that's this. The hormone in question now is not insulin, and it's not thyroid hormone. The hormone now is estrogens, and th there's, a, there's a group of them. And, and for a young woman, I'm speaking specifically of estradiol. As she was just talking to me on the phone, I started thinking, well, wait a minute. Menstrual cramps, all that means is that the, the lining of your uterus, which is getting ready for pregnancy every month, the uterus is, the, is this marvelously optimistic organ that thinks every single month it could be the big one. Um, so the, the endometrial layer thickens up and it's estrogen that thickens it. And if you have too much estrogen in your blood, in a minute, I'll tell you how that happens. If you've got too much estrogen in your blood, the thickening of that endometrial layer goes on too long. And then when it disintegrates in menstrual flow, it releases these pain causing chemicals called prostaglandins that make you hurt. So she's telling me her symptoms on the phone and I thought, I got it. Okay, where are there estrogens in your diet? Cheese, dairy products have estrogens that came from a cow. Mm -hmm. In addition, your body will make estrogens if you're eating more body, uh, more, more fat, uh, fat from meat, fat from any source. And third, if you, increased fiber in your diet. Your body has a way of eliminating excess estrogen. So all I suggested to her, to this young woman, I said, let me give you some painkillers so that you can get through the day today, right. but let's try a test for the next, next month or two months. She said, let, let's, let's do it, let's try it. 
I said, no animal products at all. You're going to hear a theme here. Getting away from animal products is the best thing for hormone balance because they, they goof you up in so many ways. I said, no animal products. Keep oils really low. What that accomplishes is it keeps the fat out and makes sure that every mouthful of food has a lot of fiber, which tames hormone. She called me back the next month and said, this is the most amazing thing ever. My period arrived with zero symptoms, zero. And the month after that, and the month after, it was a complete cure for her. So we then did a, a clinical trial with Georgetown University mm-hmm. and the department of OBGYN and found that this works. Um, and all we're doing is that by increasing fiber, we're allowing the body to eliminate excess estrogens. It goes from the liver through the bile duct into the intestinal tract and fiber grabs it. And then you're literally flushing the estrogens away down the toilet. And that allows the uterus to settle down. And then by, by limiting fat, you're also moderating the amount of estrogen. So it's really easy. And, and for so many women, it's just life changing. And then in the process, you lose a couple of pounds, your energy is better, your cholesterol comes down and you think, why didn't I do this 10 years ago? And people don't do these things because they're a little afraid of, of making a diet change or, um, or the, the, people have kind of reluctance to, to step out of what they're, mm. the rut they're in. But once they do, they discover that there's a world waiting for them out there. Excellent. Now that's really encouraging. So I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.